Friday, January the 14th, and for today anyway, these are all heads of government gathered in Washington for a transatlantic security summit. In real life, they're all former senior policymakers. They don't know what's going to happen today. All they've been told so far of the plot is that there are reports of possible smallpox cases in Europe. Rather than rush home, the heads are using this meeting to work out how they're going to respond to what appears to be a series of bioterrorist attacks. GNN has now confirmed an outbreak of smallpox in several European countries. Smallpox is the most dreaded disease in history. It is painful, kills one third of its victims, leaves some survivors blind, and most disfigured. For more on this disease, we have Dr. D.A. Henderson, the scientist responsible for the successful campaign to rid the world of smallpox in the 1970s. Dr. Henderson, how should authorities respond to this crisis? First, they will need to find those who are infected as quickly as possible. I'm sorry, because Dr. Small Henderson. I'm sorry. A GNN has just learned that Al Jazeera has broadcast a tape from a group calling themselves the uh, Al Jihad Al Jadid, or the New Jihad, that is claiming responsibility for this smallpox attack. This uh, crisis has very great collective uh, implications. Uh, and what is also clear is that there is a danger in moving too slowly and a danger in moving too fast. It's a bit different from what we have seen from Al-Qaeda in the past where some uh, actions were mostly directed against the West and here they are obviously running the risk of enormous collateral damage. I mean, you can hardly call it collateral damage in uh, Islamic countries because smallpox is not, uh, uh, doesn't stop at uh, the borders of, uh, of religion and, and, and race. As far as the tone of our response is concerned, I have already instructed my ministers uh, that they should not use any language which would inflame racial or ethnic tension. I believe that we should do the same. I can tell you also, I don't know whether you're getting this from your people, but our population is getting uh, somewhat agitated. This is the emergency period, and we must not, not lose one hour and we must decide all together because we must be in agreement to offer the same attitude in our countries. I do want to open this up for floor discussion, but first I'd like to have a briefing uh, from the summit staff. I am the U.S. Deputy National Security Advisor, and I'm speaking on behalf of the collective summit staff. As of 9 a.m., there are 51 reported cases of smallpox reported to national governments and then to the summit staff. In Germany, there are 25 suspected cases concentrated mostly in or around Frankfurt and Munich. In the Netherlands, eight suspected cases in or around Rotterdam. In Turkey, 15 cases in or around Istanbul. And in Sweden, there are three suspected cases in Stockholm. This pattern strongly suggests that multiple bioterrorist attacks have occurred probably in Frankfurt, Rotterdam, Istanbul, and Stockholm. It will be a week before all the victims of these attacks have begun to show signs of smallpox. And we believe it should be assumed that each of these cases will in turn infect three others, and by mid-February we will be seeing an epidemic of 10,000 cases of smallpox. We in the UK have already taken some precautionary measures. Our medical staffs have been uh, vaccinated, and I've instructed that all workers at our ports and airports should also be vaccinated. We are issuing a travel advisory which bans travel to the areas directly concerned, both to and from it. My country is ready to give help to the rest of the world and to start giving vaccine through uh, WHO and eventually to restart uh, the fabrication of new vaccine doses. My experience over the last years is that the discussions at the general level about solidarity, about how to deal with the potential needs in a bioterrorist or in a reoccurrence uh, by accident of smallpox, um, is easier to discuss at the general level than when you get into a situation where you have to make clear commitments. Before they share vaccine, they need to know how much they've got to begin with. It turns out that some have a lot more than others. 
The important point is that in all, the total global inventory of smallpox vaccine is just over 700 million doses, enough to vaccinate a little more than 10% of the world's population. The US, Those Germany, France and the Netherlands have enough to vaccinate all their citizens, but they don't have much left over for anybody else. Canada, Sweden and Turkey have nothing like enough. The Republic of Turkey has formally requested that the North Atlantic Council immediately invoke Article 5 of the NATO Treaty. And under Article 5, Turkey is requesting immediate assistance from its NATO allies. Turkey has minimal stocks of vaccine, and this request would cover its entire population of 70 million. Turkey needs our solidarity, no question about that. What does that mean for Article 5? Article 5 is not the response to the health situation they're facing. You all are talking about cooperation, and I think that's very important. And I'm a different president uh, than the previous one. But uh, uh, I do think that I'm, it's still the same country. And a lot of our people uh, are very knowledgeable about the fact that when we wanted cooperation, uh, at the time that we were attacked and 3,000 people died, there was, and we, the Article 5 was invoked, but in fact, when we really needed help in Iraq, many of you decided it was not useful. Madeline, I understand your political problems. Why us, Europe and Turkey? Uh, maybe there is a plan. Maybe there is a plan to split us. Briefings have told them that there are two ways to go with vaccination, ring or targeted around the affected areas, or straightforward mass vaccination. The WHO recommends the ring approach, not least because if everybody who has stocks goes to mass vaccination, there'll be none left for anyone else. But events are getting away from them. We are breaking news from the US. Health officials are investigating reports of dozens of suspected smallpox cases in and around Los Angeles and New York City. We have with us now Senator Harrison Pratt. Senator, what is your reaction to reports of suspected smallpox cases in America? In a few hours, Congress will convene to vote on a joint resolution that forbids one dose of that vaccine from leaving this country until all Americans have been vaccinated. All agreements to share vaccine must be put on a hold. We must defend America first. The amount of uh, people who are infected is uh, growing at such a large state that uh, uh, we don't believe that they can contain it uh, anymore. Uh, so the cabinet has proposed to me to uh, agree with mass uh, vaccination and I did so. We have gone beyond uh, ring vaccination right now in the areas affected. The alternative is not ring vaccination at one or two places and the, the alternative being full vaccination of the entire country. We have full regions where we now have to go into this dimension. So I, I would hope, uh, I, I can understand the political pressures and yeah. in, in, uh, the realities in Netherlands and the United States, but uh, I, I think we have to, we have to, be, uh, we have to be aware of the fact that we must not create mass panic. Uh, a call for mass vaccinations will, will definitely lead to this. Three hours into the exercise, confirmed cases are up to 956, with 100,000 predicted in the next two weeks. Across Europe and North America, ports and border crossings are grinding to a halt, and panic is setting in on the ground. Meanwhile, German news media is reporting major vehicle traffic leaving Frankfurt and Munich, as well as huge lines of cars attempting to enter Germany from Poland. Many Poles are apparently hoping to get smallpox vaccine at German clinics. If you really accept that you will close borders, I mean dramatically, then I mean you will have consequences which go far beyond anything we can imagine because you will have collapse in the economy, you will have a turn down in the global economy. I mean, our transatlantic relations will be, I mean, I mean, just look, I mean, the dollar, a euro, just take one, the currency. I mean, look at this, what, what is going to happen? Well, and I agree, and uh, before a short break, I made a proposal to, to reintroduce uh, the compulsory uh, pox vaccination, smallpox vaccination for those who cross borders. Because it is not the idea to secure borders in the sense of, of making them tight. The idea must be to make oh. trends, uh, to make crossing borders safe. Uh, otherwise, we are going to destroy our economies within a few weeks. I have to tell you, you may be putting your union together. I am having problems between my states. 
uh, because what is happening is that the governors of, and I'm admitting this to you, which I wouldn't normally do, uh, that Nevada, Indiana, and Pennsylvania are reporting strong public and political pressure to control their borders, and they don't want anybody coming in from California. So your union is getting together and mine is falling apart. So uh, I think that... <laughs> At this point, the leaders are getting anxious about getting home. Even though a lot of the big issues are still on the table, Turkey's still waiting for an answer, you notice. They focus on two last things. What institution will they use to manage the crisis going forward? And crucially, what are they going to say to the press? I think you were right, uh, Madeline, when you brought out the idea of an operations center. Uh, and I agree also that uh, the uh, European Union, NATO, is probably the best uh, powerhouse for that. And Brussels might be the best location. My recommendation for the moment, time being, and we'll get new decisions certainly all together, is to go as far as possible with WHO. To share the vaccine, to distribute the doses, of course in consideration with the affected countries and not, and first the affected country. I, I think it's a very good idea that we have, as a result of being together, provided some suggestions. Yeah. But if all we talk about are institutions when people are dying, they're going to think we're crazy. They spend about 20 minutes discussing a rather anodyne press statement, then they go to meet the press. It's 2.45, 3,300 people around the world now have confirmed smallpox. Given existing infection rates and the distribution of vaccine stocks, it will be 660,000 by mid-February, whether the leaders carry on working together or not. I came into this thinking it was going to be a not very subtle demonstration of the importance of multilateralism, having rules and institutions and arrangements in place for sharing things like smallpox vaccine. In a sense, it was. But it was also a demonstration of the opposite. After five hours of talking about caring and sharing, faced with this particular imminent threat to their citizens, at bottom it was every country for themselves. Definitely the lesson to me was that you have to be prepared uh, and that if you don't have something, you are dependent on the kindness of others. Uh, and there is the difficulty when you're a national leader that your first responsibility is to your own people. Finally, a cheery epilogue. People all over the world are struggling to cope with the cascading horror caused by the bioterrorist attacks unleashed on Europe and North America last month. The WHO will not speculate on how many will eventually contract the disease or die of it. But many experts expect smallpox cases will be counted in the millions as the epidemic infiltrates other parts of the globe. You might call it scaremongering. They call it consciousness raising. The last one of these, back in 2001, persuaded George Bush to invest in smallpox vaccine for the whole population. Coming out of this exercise, other countries may be thinking the same thing. But with nearly half a million infected, even in countries like the UK and the US that had big vaccine stockpiles, they might also wonder whether vaccinations after the event are enough.